I think we should talk about the licensing process. I think record companies and publishers are changing the way they work with um, creative uh, companies such as you know, advertising industry. Um, you know, we've seen a real shift from uh, literally just talking to the licensing department, the synchronization team, whose pure focus is to drive revenue from licensing tracks. We're now seeing um, more and more people coming into these meetings, more and more A&R guys, more sales and marketing teams. Uh, and we're looking at deals where, um, yes, the license is the, the, the kind of the first port of call, so we've got that track, we've got it on our ad, but now we're seeing uh, how we can work with that record company, with that artist, to exploit that relationship further. Um, and this means that the, the sales and marketing team, the, the A&R guys are, are getting involved, and, and whether it's um, a new artist or a, uh, um, an existing artist with back catalogue, you know, we're, we're looking at ways to exploit that. The record companies have a part to play in that, uh, and they're changing their model so that they're working more uh, in, in a more integrated fashion with advertising industries. Um, to give you a couple of examples, it may be a, a new artist that's looking for a launch uh, Launchpad um, being used on, on a particular advert. It may be an artist that's got a best of coming out or um, a, a new tour or a new album. Uh, it may be just an artist that um, has released a, a single but hasn't really sort of exploded yet. Uh, and there's loads and loads of examples of where an artist has gone on, gone on to sell, sell lots of records because of an advertising um, campaign. So, uh, you know, in the last, I'd say, four or five years, we've seen publishers getting more proactive with advertising agencies, we've seen the record industry changing and, and uh, you know, they're all knocking on our doors rather than just the licensing teams. Will you guys start having relationships with either established or new artists, I'll throw it out to anybody who wants to grab it, of actually putting records out, and that, 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 that could mean digital distribution when I say that. So anybody want to grab that? It, it depends on who we talk to at Verve Life. Uh, if we're talking to investors, we're a technology company, but we're really a technology company uh, with a service offering, uh, agency-like service offering wrapped around it. But the f the, and, and if we're talking to uh, you know, producers or record labels, we might be a distribution partner. Um, but really, that's probably the most powerful, uh, uh, for, for anyone in this audience, is probably the most powerful uh, component of our pitch, is that we, we offer a very, uh, well, incremental, um, but, but very powerful distribu distribution mechanism to artists uh, and to labels, for that matter. Um, uh, Verve Life will deliver in excess of two billion, perhaps close to three billion, unique access codes this year alone. Um, so for a young company, we're we're, we're doing some pretty interesting things, uh, and are becoming uh, fairly well known in the brand uh, marketing space. Which, by the way, is a five hundred billion dollar per year space. Uh, marketers are in in need um, of aligning themselves with with bands, up and coming artists, as well as established artists. So the opportunity for, for, for anyone in the music business, uh, whether they're working with an established artist and looking to continue uh, making money for that artist or looking to break a new artist, uh, working directly with brands is a phenomenal platform. Uh, the way my company in particular distributes it might be uh, featuring an artist on 100 million cereal boxes and then creating an experience. It's not a, a one-stop shop download store, but it's something very unique to that brand that really allows us to showcase uh, the artist or a catalog of, of content. Please touch upon the sensitivity of authenticity and credibility with the musician, the, the artist, and the song. To me, you touch at the key point. That is probably the most important. Whether we can, on the long run, have association between types of music and brands. And I would say that um, it, it totally dependent on the programming, the way you, as, you know, we are, Definitely a technical company, but our main added value is probably about programming, you know, and making sure that not only um, we've got the good uh, artist with a good brand, but also the good user experience. And I think that, you know, one of the things that the brand are probably getting to realize is that um, until now, what they did was one shot operations, you know, and um, to reinforce the brand territory, which is pretty much attacked by the art discounter, you know, which is something we, which is really interesting because what we see at least in Europe is that most of the people who come to us as a brand say, you know, we try to keep our margin high, but uh, life is hard and so on. And we, we've got a lot of art discounter, which do exactly the same things that we do. And um, they don't care about branding. They don't care about uh, but the notion of legacy of the, the, the branding. And we've been around for like decades, decades and um, we would like to really keep a long-term relationship with our consumer. 
you know, and we felt that music is might be a key element to first reinforce who we are and then build up some CRM bridges between us and our, our, our consumers. And you might think that the brand may arm the artist's legacy, but the contrary can happen too. You know, and I would say that we'll see certainly something which won't work, which will arm both sides maybe. But um, you know, where there is some money, I mean, I mean, there have been some sponsors in the music space for, for since the music exists probably. You know, and those sponsors change from, I would say, uh, rock, uh, you know, uh, stadiums to uh, whatever. And now it's the brand's time because, I mean, uh, it represents a key um, aspect of our lives, the brand. And I, I definitely think that on the long run, we may see some very large catalog associated to some brands and um, not only catalogs, but also, I would say, a very long-term relationship based on uh, the notion of uh, getting some feedback from the consumer out of uh, the music experience. People are interested in getting you music, not necessarily today, but uh, you in your new capacity, Rick, how does one get to you? In the, sa in the same way, I guess, from, from the artist's perspective, in the same way they would, they would have always come to me uh, if I was working at a, at a record company. Um, it, it, the interesting thing, for, for purely from a personal perspective, is how m uh, my day-to-day -day, um, processes have changed in that I used to have to try and make decisions based upon, with, with the team that I was working with, based upon you know, traditional values and, and the understanding of where we think we can sell records, et cetera, et cetera. So if you like, the A&R process was um, based upon those traditional processes. Um, my A&R process now is a, is a vastly different concept because ultimately I have to now think about where and whether or not an artist um, or how we can achieve um, uh, a relationship with an artist and a, and a brand. And it, and it will be, uh, you know, I, I don't have to make deci decisions on working with artists ba based on whether or not they can sell records. Uh, essentially, the A&R process is linked to identifying the brand value of an artist. And, and that's a really important, profound change in, in just my day-to-day -day role. And I think it probably will be reflected in the music industry Similarly, you need to con you need to collect together all of the properties that an artist has, and that's across every area of its brand. So every part of its intellectual property has to be considered, and it doesn't just have to be about selling records. You can give things away if it's part of a transparent marketing campaign, because it can be a great route to market. Giving stuff away. In fact, two of my partners they sit on my. Um, board um, own a company called Upfront Promotions and, and like it or loathe it, they, I think, have a phenomenal business um, strategy whereby they, they do 90% of the cover mount business in the UK. So, for example, they were the guys that put together the Prince and Mail on Sunday promotion that you probably all read about. Now, um, controversial as it was to an extent, um, I think it provided, the, most importantly, the two most important people with an incredible opportunity, the consumer and the artist. They are all the th the, the, that we care about. I, you know, I, don't, I don't care about how the music industry has to keep paying itself. I only care about how the consumer gets to hear about music and how the artist gets the consumer to hear about the music. And fundamentally, those interesting and innovative new um, processes and platforms like cover mounts and uh, and, and giving away copy, you know, elements of copyright within digital campaigns, etc., etc., is very similar. What a fantastic way of getting people to hear about your music.